So, in the last class uh, we basically concluded that if you have uh, an amplifier or actually any linear system with internal noise sources, uh, you can represent the effect of all the noise sources inside by thinking of this as uh, noiseless and accounting for the effect of all the internal noise sources uh, by using uh, I think we call them V A and I A right, the different notations to use it does not matter what. Uh, the key points to note are that V A and I A are properties of of the network and the noise sources inside right uh, and therefore, um, you know if you wanted to uh, kind of hand this uh, this black box over to somebody else who might be using the box, uh, you not only uh, uh, you know give them the two port parameters and um, so that they will be able to figure out what the input impedance is and what they must drive this network with. Uh, you also give them V A and I A and uh, in principle uh, you know that should be good enough uh, to be able to figure out what the output noise would be regardless of what source impedance you drive the uh, you drive the network. Hmm? Does it make sense? And in general uh, V A and I A uh, are they independent both of them are uh, you know uh, noise sources. Uh, in general are V A and I A independent? They are not because V A and I A are both uh, derived from the same independent noise sources inside right. So, V A is some linear combination of V 1, V 2, V 3 all the way through V n and likewise I A is some other linear combination of V 1 through V n. So, clearly uh, you know uh, they are uh, they are related to each other. Uh, so, they are not independent. So, in general V A and I A are correlated sources. Okay. And uh, so, a couple of observations. Let us say, for example, that uh, we are driving the network with uh, some RS, and then here is our VA, and here is our IA. And uh, this is the internals of the network. So, there is some some R in here that represents the input impedance of the network looking in all right. So, what comment can you make about uh, uh, the, uh, the uh, what comment did we make about the Thevenin voltage uh, looking in here? It is simply V i plus V a plus I a times R s correct. Uh, so, if the R s if we were driving it with uh, if we were driving it with an ideal voltage source uh, then what comment can you make uh, if the, uh, the source is an ideal voltage source. What comment can you make? Uh, which of these uh, input referred noise sources uh, uh, is inconsequential? Well, I A is of no consequence. All right. On the other hand, if the source is a is an ideal current source what 
what is of uh, uh, no consequence. I mean, RS therefore tends to infinity, right? And then uh, uh, what is of no consequence? The voltage source is of no consequence. Right. So, uh, in reality, RS is not uh, neither. Uh, in practice, RS will neither be zero or infinity. Okay, uh, and uh, so both, at least in principle, VA and IA will both be uh, will be um, will be important. Right, and uh, if you, uh, I mean, this also basically points to the fact that there is a sweet spot as far as choosing, I mean remember that uh, this thevenin voltage here is, uh, is this right and you know once you have that thevenin voltage that VTH times you know Rn by Rn plus Rs is going to get amplified by the or processed by the, uh, by the rest of the network, correct. So, yeah, if you basically want to minimize within quotes the noise, right? If the noise evidently depends on. I mean, this is the signal, and this part corresponds to the noise. Okay, so both the signal and V A plus I A times R S are going to be processed by the same transfer function going forward, right? So maximizing the signal to noise ratio, therefore, means that you need to, you know. You would like to make sure that the uh, signal power to uh, you know uh, the noise power is as large as possible, and uh, so uh, and there is uh, you know uh, evidently a sweet spot. Let us say at a certain frequency, you know uh, the strength of VA is uh, you know uh, is. Uh, uh, is very large compared to uh, IA times RS. Okay, there are two quantities which uh, cause noise. One is VA, the other one is IA times RS. Okay, so if if uh, IA times RS is very very small, let us say somehow it turns out that the input referred noise current source is very small in magnitude. Right? Then what comment can you make about RS? You know, uh, you can. I mean, as I said, this basically means that that R s can be made you know uh, uh, arbitrarily large ok alright. Uh, but on the other hand I mean but if I a is not uh, 0, uh, but is finite but small uh, in the beginning for some value of R s let us say I a times R s is very small compared to V a and you say oh well great let me go and crank up R s right. As you go on increasing R s what will happen eventually? I mean that basically if I increase R s basically means I can use a poorer and poorer source that is what it means right. So, if I go on cranking up or yanking up R s what happens eventually? Yes. <coughs> what happens? Oh well that I a times R s starts to you know starts to become very large right. Uh, so, I mean there is evidently a, you know a, a sweet spot uh, for uh, uh, you know. Uh, so, given the strengths of V a and I a. Uh, and uh, in fact, uh, you know that they are also correlated given uh, the properties of V a and I a, uh, you will find that there is uh, a sweet spot for the source in this uh, in our example source resistance in general source. I mean all these are basically you know we just assume that there is no memory and then uh, you know uh, did everything finally everything is going to be a function of frequency. So, all that it means is that this is that Z s of of j omega at a certain frequency there is some you know there is some sweet spot for uh, the uh, uh, the source impedance which minimizes the uh, the total amount of noise right. So, if you choose uh, for example, uh, you know uh, too small uh, uh, a source impedance right uh, V a will dominate correct if R s is 0 it is only V a that is uh, 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 consequential. If you use too large uh, uh, Z s is the I a will dominate right. But perhaps it is possible to choose something somewhere in the middle where this V a plus I a times Z s is, is small.
right? It depends on the relative values of VA and IA as well as the correlation between them. Hmm? Okay, so uh, and those of you who have done uh, you know an RF class basically uh, you know have seen this in that context. Um, uh, but I think doing that now basically is, uh, uh, is not particularly useful. Uh, the next thing uh, I would like to talk about is, uh, uh, is this concept of uh, again this is largely jargon right. Uh, it is a noise factor or uh, also called noise figure and the idea is the following. Uh, so, we have our let us say we have our source and uh, we, are, we have our amplifier or filter or whatever you have. Uh, there is a whole bunch of internal noise sources and uh, you look at uh, the output and uh, there, let me okay. So, let us again assume that the input uh, perhaps is coming from some kind of antenna the antenna has got some source resistance and this source resistance adds noise right. So, this noise is basically uh, noise spectral density is 4 kT Rs. Hmm? So, in the first case what I am going to do is simply look at the noise spectrum uh, let us call the uh, or uh, assuming there is no memory. Uh, V n 1 square right that is the mean square noise of the output of the amplifier ok. Next thing I am going to do is uh, uh, you know uh, all noise sources are active and let us say the output and I again measure the output noise. All right, which will be uh, which will be larger? Uh, it's a no-brainer, right? So basically, V n two square on a mean square value of that will be much greater than V n one square. Correct. So this ratio is a measure of. I mean, what uh, physical meaning can we? attached to this quantity uh, the mean square value again uh, as I said this is uh, uh, we were assuming that there is no memory inside the amplifier. So, at this point is just simply the mean square noise integrated over some bandwidth. Uh, uh, um, so, but what physical uh, significance can we attach to this quantity? What does this number quantify? Well, uh, this basically is telling you how badly the I mean, V n 1 square is simply the the uh, the input noise that is processed by by the amplifier correct and uh, that input I mean the input signal is also processed by the same transfer function because uh, you know the noise source corresponding to R s and the input voltage V i have the same transfer function correct ok. So, this noise so uh, this noise basically in case 1 corresponds to uh, the noise that would have been there at the output even if the amplifier was perfectly noiseless right. The second case is you know what you actually see which is simply uh, you know uh, uh, consists of two parts one part is the input noise processed by the amplifier. On top of it there is extra noise that the, the amplifier adds uh, you know on top of it 
uh, you know uh, of its own correct and clearly the best you can do is if vn square 2 square is the same as vn vn 1 square right and so this uh, this number uh, must always be greater than or equal to 1 right and this is a uh, you know uh, this quantifies the uh, SNR degradation caused by the amplifier. All right. Remember, if the amplifier is perfectly noiseless, what comment can we make about uh, the input SNR and the output SNR? Well, it is the same thing, right? Uh, you have taken a noisy waveform uh, and you have amplified it up, you have amplified the signal and the noise by the same factor, and therefore the SNR does not change. Okay? Now, what are you doing? Uh, now, one, uh, you are amplifying the signal and the input noise by the same factor, on top of it, you are adding your own noise, right? And therefore, you, are, uh, you have effectively degraded the signal to noise ratio and that is equivalent to simply saying you know you might uh, yeah, I mean the degradation in SNR is simply uh, found by just taking the ratio of the noise that you would see that you see at the output divided by the noise you would have seen provided the amplifier was noiseless right. So, and this is uh, therefore this is what is called the noise factor or uh, 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 the noise uh, noise figure. Uh, so, it is common to I mean noise fact I mean there is also I mean there is some confusing notation here. Uh, this absolute number is often uh, called the noise factor. Uh, people li also like to do uh, I mean uh, something else that you will see is 10 log to the base 10 of uh, noise factor is uh, noise figure and some people use it interchangeably and so on but you know if they say uh, the noise factor is uh, is uh, 3 db it basically means that the noise factor is 3 db what does it mean the output noise snr is i mean or vn2 square by vn1 square is a factor of 2 which basically means that the amplifier is adding as much noise as the input noise source after going through the through the amplifier okay 